Let's go back to 2017. And you go on your recommended and you see this. You see that thumbnail and you wonder, okay, this, this has to be a joke, right? Then you click on the video and you hear this. I know you've probably already read the title by now, but um, I feel like we should just come out and say it. I'm leaving Smosh. So Anthony and Ian in 2017 decided to part ways because of what was happening at Smosh at the time. Anthony was fed up of doing everything that he didn't want to do. And Ian was kind of the same, though he had to stay on Smosh. One OG member had to stay. But funny how that would all change six years later. Today, Anthony and I can say officially that we own Smosh. Incredible. Smosh have reunited one year ago and have been making sketches for the next 365 days. And during that time, we got some good sketches and we also got some bad ones. But during this entire year, I've noticed a common problem throughout most of the bad and even sometimes some of the good sketches that had some. Uh, so we're gonna be going through every single sketch. I'm gonna rank them from 24 to number one and we'll see at the end what the problem is. Number 24, would you push this button? By far the absolute worst of the bunch. Like the shut up button has been a, a nice concept, I would say. Like it's been used since like the early 2010s, at least in the classic Smosh era. But they brought it back once again, which obviously is not a bad concept, but it was executed so bad and so poorly. All of the jokes fall flat. Every single scene that is that tries so hard to be funny, like that presidential debate, it just falls flat on its face. Like, it doesn't make any sense, and like, I guess that the same woman from the beginning, like, now gets arrested, like, like, I don't know, this entire thing is a mess. You might as well just skip this one, if, if I'm being honest with you. This gets a 3 out of 10 from me. This is actual garbage. Number 23. Mr. Beast copycats have gone too far. We've had a lot of Mr. Beast copycats in YouTube, and Smosh is trying to be one of them now? The whole plot is that a fake Jimmy, who is actually played by Ian, is going around, you know, making fun of these girlfriends until he gets a $1 billion girlfriend, and then somehow he hooks up with this dude who is played by Chance, which is... It just doesn't make sense to me. Like, you're making a video showing off girlfriends, not boyfriends. And then the girl rejects him, and now he's trying to trap one of his friends in this, like, basement. Like, I don't know. It's like, it's like trying to play off the fact that Jimmy is running out of ideas. Or maybe he's making fun of the copycats. I don't know. It's, it's too unclear for my mind to process. This is also not a good sketch at all. I would say this is also a 3 out of 10. Number 22. Bluetooth speaker ruins date. This is yet again another pointless sketch. This is like the final sketch that draws off the fact that, oh, Anthony's dead now, like from food battle. Like to be fair, in the classic Smosh era, they didn't really acknowledge this. They were they were releasing sketches every week. It's like, oh, one week Anthony dies, next week he comes back to life. I didn't know this guy was Chad Gable in disguise. But in all seriousness though, the, the plot of this sketch is that, you know, Ian and, Ar Ian and Arasha are on a date and apparently, Ian is trying to kiss Arasha and apparently he, he accidentally like he leaves the Bluetooth speaker like playing like the tutorial video and it's very awkward to watch like I understand this is like the shut up button video they're trying to make these awkward scenes that are trying to be funny but they're just not funny it just doesn't make sense at all and then the word shit being uncensored just doesn't make sense Thank God they went back to censoring it because it just, it makes it so much funnier in my opinion. Yeah, this also gets a 3 out of 10 from me. This is just not good at all. Number 21, we were robbed. This is the second sketch that Ian and Anthony wrote since their reunion and the third one that was released because you know we had to stop copying me like uh, stop copying me part two which we will get to, I promise you. But it's just nothing more than Anthony standing there and listening to this mindfulness tutorial or something. But in reality it's supposed to be like this like ha like this haunting video or I guess audio of like a guy being robbed or like a lot of shenanigans happens and Ian is enjoying it and then Anthony is like, wow, I got a lot of mindfulness out of that. And then that helps him with 
a robbery. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Like, the the bad thing about Smosh sketches is that, like, like if it's a bad Smosh sketch when it doesn't make sense. It's a good sketch when it does make sense in Smosh's weird, clever way. But this one fails to do that, and it gets a 4 out of 10. Number 20. We have the dating app that works 100% of the time. Obviously over dramatizing Tinder or Bumble or all these dating apps and saying, you know, all the shenanigans happens, but then AI can solve the problem. Admittedly, the AI, the AI stuff is kind of funny, I will say at one point, but then, you know, the climax of the video is like when, oh, they have a baby and then you're legally, re legally required to stay together for 18 years. If it wasn't for the AI jokes, this would easily be like one of the worst sketches, but the AI portion of it kind of saves it because you never know what the AI will say next. So I'm going to give this sketch a 5 out of 10. Number 19, if video games were real 2024. Now this should be a huge home run for them. They should, you know, we have this iconic formula that has given us some of the best classic Smosh sketches. But for some reason, they just didn't find a way to work it this time. Probably because they went through some useless games that nobody plays. Like they went through Baldur's Gate 3 at one point. Like, I know that game was nominated like as Game of the Year for the Game Awards, and in fact it won it, but who the hell knows Baldur's Gate 3 in the general public? And hell, some of the video games that they did parody that I know, like Mario Party for example, they were just bad. They ended so quickly, I think they just wanted to get like enough games out the hood to make the video longer, which is not what I want to see from Smosh at all. I'm going to give this one another 5 out of 10. Number 18 evil AI tried to kill me. Now we have an early reunion sketch here. Basically, Ian breaks this AI computer that Anthony made and the only way it can uh, keep going is if it has Pepto-Bismol, but it, it, it's actually getting worse. I mean, admittedly, the, the, the dialogue from the computer is actually kind of funny, like, I need Pepto-Bismol and stuff like that. It's actually kind of hilarious at some points. And then Anthony and Ian did this whole like PSA where they're trying to be like super helpful, like, this is not good for our culture and shit like that. Like those are like the only two parts that are kind of funny. Everything else is just like going through the motions. It's like when you go through the motions, not really a lot of stuff is funny, right? I'm sorry guys, I just have a, you know, a high standard of humor and this doesn't meet that for me. So I'm gonna give this a five out of 10. Number 17, I joined Jared Leto's cult. Now this one is actually the one that I would say is not bad. Like, this is the first one where I'm like, it's kind of mediocre. It's presented in a My Strange Addiction type of way, where, you know, Anthony has to go to this Jared Leto, you know, cult, and Ian is trying to force him out of it. It reminds me of that one video where they made, like, 10 years ago, where Anthony was a selfie addict. Like, it, it gives me that kind of energy, which I do like. So, yeah, like, this sketch was not really that bad. I like the presentation, I like the experimentation, and I like some of the humor in this as well. Like, Ian being... Jared Leto and speaking random nonsense and him being like sick as well was very very hilarious. I'm gonna give this a 6 out of 10. It's not amazing but it's definitely passable. Number 16, My Dead Friend. This is the first sketch after Food Battle 2023 where Anthony dies and this time they actually acknowledge that Anthony is dead. So, you know, continuity exists now in the Smosh universe. And, you know, they do this thing where, you know, they have Amanda as Ian's date, and, you know, Anthony is, like, they have Anthony be, like, this robot that does everything, and Damien is the waiter, It's just like, some of the humor in this is actually kind of funny, and I like the robotic noises. I'm gonna give this a 6 out of 10. Number 15, we try to be funny for once. The plot of this is that Ian does not really make funny jokes, so what's the next thing you can do? The actual, like... The, the idea of this is what makes it very funny for me. Because he hires an audience, like a live studio audience, to laugh at his jokes. And it's actually pretty hilarious, if I do say so myself. Like they, they sometimes go overkill with the laughing. And then they go on and, like, you know, laugh at Anthony's jokes now. And then, you know, they, they all die. <laughs> you know, just random stuff like that is what I need in my smosh sometimes. I'm going to give this another 6 out of 10. Number 14, Grimace, where is he now? So obviously a parody of the Grimace shake. And I will say this was actually pretty cool because, I mean, I don't just value comedy in Smosh, I also value like experimentation. 
sometimes like you know and this definitely has a good amount of experimentation and it's done the right way with you know grimace saying like oh like it was my idea to do the grimace shake because you know like ronald, ronald mcdonald is not giving him any credit and then they have many members of the smosh cast you know like drinking the grimace shake and then you know you get what i'm trying to say here so yeah that's one of the main compliments i can give this sketch i'm going to give this a six out of ten Number 13, Submissive and Breedable. I don't know if this really counts as a sketch, but I'm gonna count this in because this music video is actually not that bad. It's mainly funny for some of the wrong reasons. I like the dance that Ian, Anthony, Ian, and Baby No Money are doing. Uh, you know, I mean, I think Baby No Money is not a bad artist in my opinion. He's very like internet focused. So that's a very good thing for an artist to have, like very aligned with the culture of the internet. So, and he said he loved Smosh growing up, so, you know, that's a bonus. And we will see him again in, in another sketch, so stay tuned for that. But yeah, this music video had a lot of entertainment value. It brings, like, the lyrics to life pretty cleverly. And, you know, I like Anthony using the, the Apple Vision Pro. Uh, and speaking of Apple Vision Pro, we will get that in a, to that in a second. But for now, I'm going to give this sketch a 7 out of 10. Number 12. Cursed Magic 8-Ball. Hey, I'm, if I'm trying to remember my reaction right now, I think I found it pretty good at the time. And, you know, I just thought that uh, things would be pretty good in this sketch. I liked that, they, you know, they ha had the idea of, like, this Cursed Magic 8-Ball that, you know, only says no to Ian, but not to Anthony. And, you know, I, I liked Anthony playing that one vampire. Like, the, a the accent was pretty hilarious, in my opinion. After watching it again recently, I can give this a 7 out of 10. I don't know what I gave it originally, like at the time. I probably didn't rate it. I think I just said it was a good sketch. But now, after watching this recently, I'm going to give this a 7 out of 10. Remember what I said earlier about Apple Vision Pro and Anthony Padilla? Number 11, Apple's $3,500 Vision Pro sucks. Well, yeah, it obviously does. I loved the Apple parodies as a kid, and I was so excited they did one for this. But I will say, it could have been a, it was a missed opportunity to not do the intro, like the shut up intro, because it would have been like incredible to do like a, like a Siri thing, because I don't think at the time they, like they they they, they said anything about Siri, so you know they, they Siri could have said something like, wait, I'm not on this device or something like that, so that could have been hilarious as a shut up intro. But I think that some of the moments in this skit are absolutely hilarious. Anthony is the star of the show here. And, you know, some of his antics are pretty freaking awesome. I'm going to give this a 7 out of 10. You should definitely watch this. I, I definitely recommend this. I definitely recommend Number 10, Pokemon in Real Life 2024. Unlike the If Video Games Were Real, this actually takes a formula that was used in the classic days and actually does it justice. You see, I'm not going to be disrespectful towards the extended cast of Smosh, but I like it when they're used in valuable ways. Like, you remember, you remember in the classic days when Ian and Anthony used to play multiple roles? The way the supporting cast would work is if they played those supporting roles, like, in sketches like these. In this sketch, uh, Courtney is Pikachu, and Blastoise, I think that's the name of the Pokemon, he is played by Shane, and then Damien and Amanda, they play this, like, this, this group, and, you know, Meowth is played by Chance. You know, like, all, all these, like, secondary actors, you know, playing these other characters, and Ian and Anthony, like, playing, like, the main characters that were presented in the old Pokemon real-life videos, that, that's the way to go, man. That's the way to go. If it wasn't for some of the jokes being a little bit repetitive, I would have given this an 8 out of 10. But, you know, it just barely, you know, digs underneath. So I'm going to give this a 7 out of 10. But you should definitely go watch it. Number 9. I regret my Turkish hair transplant. This is an absolute trip to watch. But I will say, I think, if I remember correctly, this is the first video after submissive and breedable because submissive and, submissive and breedable do not have the shut up intro and this one has it but it has a shortened version so and and they've been using that for the sketches ever since and ian and anthony if you're watching this right now bring back like like the 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 the, 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 the longer shut up intros they use like when you previously like 
did these sketches. Like, we'll get to the earlier sketches, like, later. You guys had full intros for those ones. And, who oh, hell, if you want someone to write them, if, like, if you even need someone to write them, let me do that, okay? I will do that. Trust me. I think I know what I'm doing here. Like, I've, I've been envisioning so many good ones. So, if you ever need somebody, you know, call me. So Ian gets a hair transplant because he wants to impress this girl after she said something about this hair transplant. And Anthony, ashamed of having a small ass, wants to get a surgery to get a new one. And the scene where they have like this butt anonymous meeting, if that, that's, how I'm, that's what I'm going to call it. You know, they have Shane there and they have Baby No Money there. Remember, Baby No Money is back. So, you know, his inclusion was actually pretty hilarious. And, you know, I like the scene where they break the fourth wall when, you know, Ian and Anthony are right next to each other, even though they, they, they seemed like they were in different, like, places. That was hilarious. So I, I'd probably give this, like, a 7 out of 10. It was actually pretty good in my opinion. Number 8, stop copying me. Okay, I know I've been giving a lot of sketches 7 out of 10s. I promise this will be the last 7 out of 10 I give. This sketch perfectly showed Ian and Anthony's chemistry on camera because their ca camera dynamic like where when they're on the camera especially after they reunited they reunited and are actually like close friends again their dynamic in this episode is t like top tier perfection i would say even better than the than the first stop copying me because the, and, and especially the sound mixing is a lot better you can you can sometimes hear anthony you can sometimes hear ian whereas in the first stop copying me anthony was always like leading like he was the one that got like most of the noise but yeah that this was pretty good number seven whatever you do don't talk this is the most recent smosh sketch at the time of recording this video and you know this is good this is pretty good i like when they just slap the table and it makes it look like a dick joke to, to the people on the security cameras which by the way another good use of the like uh secondary uh cast members you have noah and angela as you know the officers interrogating ian and anthony you know that was that was pretty genius on their part i will say that and the charades translations can sometimes be pretty hilarious if i do say so myself they always like get interpreted as dick jokes <laughs> and like you know other like types of weird jokes i'm gonna give this an 8 out of 10 this was actually pretty hilarious if i do say so myself now we're getting into the very juicy good ones if that's a phrase number six man caught watching hot tub girl in public but that's not the only thing they show here so basically a man gets caught watching a hot tub girl in public, specifically at a movie theater. But it turns out it was a sponsorship for an, ener for an, ener for an energy drink. Why can't I speak today, please, for the love of God? So then Ian, who is playing the role of like the manager, he decides to, you know, assign like the other people uh, to make ads. And, you know, if anyone else can guess what they were, but then surprise, this entire video was an ad. So, you know, that was actually pretty clever. You see, I like the clever jokes. I'm a man of good taste. Reference to Mick Jagger there. But, you know, this was pretty good. I'd probably give this another 8 out of 10 if I do say so myself. Top 5. Number 5. Help. I became an NPC. There was a time after we summoned a demon that, you know, but, and this was like my most watched sketch before Food Battle came out. And I, I loved, you know, the re-inclusion of that stupid police officer, you know, from the classic days, you know, who's played by Ian. And, you know, I think there could have been an opportunity to, you know, include another cast member as the therapist. But I'm glad, you know, it, it's just an Ian and Anthony show this, this time as well. I think the sketch deserves an 8 out of 10 in my book. I mean, it's just just pure entertainment at its finest number four pokemon roommate battle i was very hyped for this one and it did not disappoint at all this is like another amazing sketch that the both of them did like anything that they do with like pokemon it just it just works it just it just works because we know all that history and I, you know this was near perfection in my opinion you know if it wasn't for that final sequence where things get a little bit out of hand, you know, this would have been a 10 out of 10, but I'm going to give this a 9. 
you should definitely go watch this. This is a very, very good. Number three, Sleepwalking Disaster. This is gold, literally. If it wasn't for the, for the other two sketches, this would be the best Smosh sketch, you know, since their reunion. You know, I feel like almost every single joke lands here. I can watch this video on a repeat. Like, Ian did an annoying orange laugh. You can't tell me otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> and again, another great inclusion of the secondary cast members. When Anthony's checking the CT CTTVs, you have like all of the other like cast members and then you have the Damien as the one who's like be begging for more money. Like it's just, it's just gold use, you know. I like when other like cast members are used properly and you know it's and it's still ian and anthony as the focus like i like that i think that's how it should stay so yeah this sketch is absolutely incredible and we get our very first 10 out of 10 in this video well done sleepwalking disaster well done number two food battle 2023 one of the best food battles in my personal opinion this was pretty good i remember watching this when it was premiering with one of my best friends and meha you know my sister so yeah we all like the three of us watched this live together and this was awesome to watch and i remember immediately when it finished i did the ranking video and i put food battle 2023 in s tier and i still stand by that this is one of the best food battles ever like i'm glad they're back in, in ian's mom's house and you know a lot of the stupid stupidness that made food battle work is still here and it's still amazing and if they do a food battle 2024 i want to see this type of stuff like consistently get brought back i think it's because they they really took their time to perfect this video because before then like i think the last the skit they made before this was like I think the Apple Vision Pro one so they hadn't been doing things for like over a month so they really took the time to really perfect this and if that's what what it should need fine if we need to take a month break in between you know for food battle bet anything for food battle <laughs> this one gets another 10 out of 10 fantastic it's near perfection but there's one more that tops it. You know, a lot of people say that, you know, you hit your peak with your very first one. That could be true for some, like, people, like, with, with artists, for example. But, you know, this is not really Anthony and Ian's first. No, no shot about that. But it's their first in their reunion. And for some reason, I don't know why they haven't topped this since. It's the perfect length. All the jokes land. Like, everything about this video is incredible. Like, at number one, it cannot be anything other than We Summoned a Demon. Like, this sketch is just perfection. This should go in the YouTube Hall of Fame, and this should be the standard for all, like, sketches moving forward. Hell, Comedy Central, take notes, because this is how you make comedy sketches. All the jokes land, all the references are amazing, and, you know, the guest appearance of, you know, Ethan, like, uh, Crank Gameplays, as I like to call him, you know, perfect, just perfect. And having Smosh the movie as a torture device, and when you're acknowledging your past wrongs, that's how you know you're a master of this. So yeah, We Summoned a Demon is by far the best sketch. So I think it's safe to say Smosh has had some goods and bads. But what is the biggest flaw that they have? Well, seeing as I've hinted at, at it many times already, I think creative humor is definitely a big fault. Like some of the jokes that are like panned out and try so hard to be funny just don't work. I feel like they really need to look back at that classic Smosh playlist because some of the stuff on there, like it should not work, but it does work. I think when something is not meant to be funny, but it, it, it has that fun energy, I think that's when it becomes funny. And I think that's perfectly showcased in some of these like top placed sketches. So Ian and Anthony, if you're watching this, I believe in you guys. You guys can still do good stuff. And when you come back from your break, you better bring it. Like, take my advice, you better bring it. But yeah, thank God this video is over. Oh my God. This video has been an absolute pain to edit. I am suffering right now. So with that being said, I hope if you, if you stayed through the entire thing, please leave a comment down below and I will like personally thank you because you are an absolute legend for sticking the whole way through. And 
tell me your favorite Smosh sketch ever since Smosh reunited in the comments below. I'd really love to hear what you guys think. So with that being said, it's been Khalid Kutata. It's been this beautiful summer destination. Next video, we're going back to the classic room. So, you know, it's been fun staying at this place for yet another summer. But with that being said, it's time to go back to basics for now. Peace.